The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Brian Kenny, and this is ESPN Sports Figures, where sports meets math and science. First up, X Games gold medalist Bob Bernquist joins our Greg Abbey to take a look at the trajectory of skateboard big air. I don't know, dude, that looks kind of far. Come on, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, I don't, I don't know. You can do it, don't feel win. Are you guys rolling? Rolling! Okay. All right. Tell my mom I love her. Do it, dude. Yeah! gonna leave a mark. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. I'm alright. I'm alright. Oh, 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 oh. That's the landed a little short that time. Oh. Sports figures, put your brain in the game. Yeah! I love coming down here to watch the rainbow. This is the mega ramp at Point X Camp, where Danny Way first set the record by flying 75 feet through the air. The big air ramps you're using at the Summer X Games these days are modeled after this one. You start 85 feet up here. Come 50 miles per hour down this ramp. Launch through the air over 70 feet. Land over here, hopefully. And then shoot up this 23-foot quarter pipe that's going to fly you over 20 feet into the air. Right. Here's the thing. Somebody had to be the first one to try this. Yeah! How did they know it would work? Oh! We can just ask him. This is Bob Bernquist. Bob is a nine-time X Games medalist. He was named the Trans World Best Vert Skater three years in a row. And in the year 2001, at the Slam City Jam, Bob was awarded a 99, the highest score ever in a vert competition. So I think it's safe to say he knows a thing or two about big air. So Bob, when did you first try the Mega Ramp? Uh, it's been an evolution with the Mega Ramp. It was just a quarter pipe first. Danny came up with the big, huge uh, quarter pipe, and then we tried that a couple times. And then a launch ramp came about. No so board. how did you guys figure out if you're going to make the gap? I usually wait for the, the <laughs> some other uh, crazier let guy them to do go. It. You know, like at the X Games, it was Pierre. <laughs> he was the first guy, so we just waited and looked, and he, was, he launched way out, and we're like, okay, we don't have that. We don't need that much speed. <laughs> but you know, you just wait around, or you can just brave, brave it out and be the first guy. You know, there is a way to figure out how far a jump will launch you before you try it. It, uh, it might be a good idea. This is a projectile. In physics, any object that is launched and can't control its own flight is a projectile. If we just drop Stevie vertically, he drops. That's the definition of a projectile, a launched object where the only force that's acting upon it is gravity. And any projectile will accelerate, change speed. When you drop, if we took my position in quarter second intervals, each quarter second I'm traveling farther. That means I'm going faster. As soon as a projectile is launched, gravity starts accelerating it down by 32 feet per second every second. That means at the end of two seconds, I'm falling 64 feet per second, or about 45 miles per hour. Ugh. Ugh. But for the horizontal border, 
He covers the same distance in each interval. Without friction, his speed is constant. There's no acceleration. When we roll something or drop something, that's motion in one dimension, back, forth, up, down. But real skateboarders move in two dimensions. Check this out. Ryan and Stevie both continued horizontally, but Stevie also had a vertical motion. He went down. When we mark off each of their positions frame by frame, we see that they are in the same place horizontally, but Stevie is lower and lower. If we combine the points, we get a curve. That curve is a precise mathematical shape called a parabola. It's not the arc of a circle, it's not an oval, it can even be different shapes. Anytime you launch a projectile, gravity makes a parabola. It's gravity's rainbow. What does all this tell us about vertical and horizontal motions? That they're different? That they don't affect each other? Right. Way back in the 1600s, Galileo proved that a parabola is a function of two independent motions. Nature declares the horizontal and vertical motions to be separate. With that, one can determine how high and how far a projectile will travel, the path of its flight. That path I'll call its trajectory. That can't be true, he's lying. Galileo's discovery proved correct, and it's the key to designing a mega ramp like this. It's a part of science called ballistics. <laughs> OK, so what did that jump tell us? If you jump out horizontally or just drop down vertically, you hit the ground at the same time. It seems strange, because usually when you launch something, it stays in the air longer than when you drop it. That's because we usually launch it at an angle. <laughs> just like on the Mega Ramp. See, the launch ramp is at an angle. It sends the border in two dimensions, up and out. The horizontal velocity stays constant, but gravity slows the upward velocity until it's zero, then speeds the downward velocity. There's an old saying, as it flies, it falls. When an object reaches the peak of its trajectory, its fall will be exactly the same. Same angle, same speed, same time. So you better stick it. So, Bob, what determines how far you're going to fly? Well, it really depends on how fast you're going when you launch. OK, and where does that speed come from? Well, it's from the height of the drop. The longer you fall, the faster you go. Remember, an object accelerates at 32 feet per second for every second it falls, or 32 feet per second squared. How fast do you guys get going? Well, at the bottom of the ramp, we hit about 50 miles per hour. All right, so a little math will tell us that 50 miles per hour is about 74 feet per second. OK, so then a two-second drop would give us about 64 feet per second. OK. And a three-second drop would give us about 96 feet per second. OK, so we can guess that a drop of about a little more than two seconds will get us to 74 feet per second. Right, but that doesn't tell you how high to make the ramp. There's an equation to figure out exactly how long a drop will produce what speed. And we have a calculator to figure it out on our website, sportsfigures.espn.com. Using it, we find a drop of 85 feet will accelerate a border 50 miles per hour, or 74 feet per second. Whoa, whoa hey! Oh, dude. Wow, that is really fast to be flying off into the air. Well, our actual launch speed is less than that, because after we drop, we go up the launch ramp. As soon as an object starts to rise, gravity starts to pull it down at 32 feet per second squared. From here to there, Bob starts to slow. His 74 feet per second is reduced by 21 feet per second, or in the roughly two-thirds of a second, he goes up the ramp. That gives us a launch speed of 53 feet per second. You see this arrow here? That's called a vector. Now, you can use vectors to figure out all kinds of problems, including problems involving trajectories, like where Bob is going to land. Just like this plan is drawn to scale, you can draw 
vectors to scale. Now this plan is uh, 1 16th scale. 1 16th inch equals 1 foot, all right? Now our velocity is 53 feet per second. So to draw it, we just divide 53 by 16 and we get 3 and a quarter inches. Like that. <laughs> well, but vectors, they show how fast and which way. Okay. So we have to draw the arrow at the launch angle exactly 30 degrees. It's all right. The two motions, up and out, give us a resultant vector like this. It shows how fast and which way. Just draw your resultant vector at the proper launch angle on an XY graph. Like here at point X, the launch is 45 degrees. Next, draw a parallelogram like this. What we're looking for are the two separate parts, components of the velocity. The XY sides of the parallelogram are these two vectors, up and out. The vertical vector is one and three quarter inches, and the horizontal is two and three quarter inches. Okay, so then you can just multiply inches by 16 to get how many feet per second? All right, that gives us 26 feet per second vertical and 46 feet per second horizontal. Okay, the horizontal velocity is 46 feet per second, so can that tell us how far the border goes? That means that he'll be traveling 46 feet horizontally for every second that he's in the air. So just multiply how long he's in the air by 46 feet. Yes, Gabe, but how long is he in the air? We don't have that info. Maybe you can use the vertical velocity to figure it out. Exactly. Because we now know Bob's vertical velocity, how fast he's going up, is 26 feet per second, and we know that gravity is pulling him down at 32 feet per second, where it's pretty simple. You just divide vertical velocity by the gravity. In this case, it's 0.81 seconds it takes for the gravity to stop Bob's ascent. As it flies, it falls. So the descent will be exactly the same time, 0.81 seconds. The total time in the air will be 1.62 seconds. Now it's easy to figure out how far you'll go. Yeah, you just multiply your horizontal velocity by the time in the air. 46 feet per second times 1.62 seconds, and you get 74.5 feet. So now, Bob, you'll be safe. You know you're going to make the, make the gap. OK, cool. Different launch angles will give the border different distances, but using vectors, you can figure that out, too. OK, guys, so what did we learn? And any object launched and only affected by gravity is called a projectile. And if an object has both vertical and horizontal motion, it forms a parabola. And those two motions are independent from each other. And that means you can solve for them separately to analyze the motion of a projectile. And with scale vectors, you can figure out how far a projectile is going to travel. Or how fast it was going by how far it traveled. Or just about anything you want to know about projectiles. Ah! Okay, so that's it. I'd like to thank Bob Burnquist and Danny Way, our skaters Ryan and Stevie, and our students, Willie, Gay, Kayla, and Roxanne, for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures, Gravity's Rainbow. What do you think, I'm nuts? Recently, Sports Center hit the road visiting 50 states in 50 days, and Sports Figures hits to ride. Hot air ballooning requires a pilot's license, thousands of dollars worth of balloon equipment, and plenty of hot air. It's just after dawn at Montauk Park in Cody, Wyoming, when preparations begin to hit the sky. How hard is it to actually fly one of these? It's really, it's really pretty simple. We have burner controls up here. I'll burn. That's how we heat our air up so that we ascend. We let the air cool and we descend. Uh, there's a vent line over here to release measured amounts of hot air if we need to descend. The balloon flies because hot air is less dense than cold air. It's lighter. Think of it as if you took a balloon underwater. We're flying now at 185 degrees. That means we're buoyant at 185 degrees. The difference in temperature between the air inside the balloon and the ambient air is what gives you buoyancy. So on a cool day, the balloon will lift with less heat. As the temperature of the day rises, the temperature inside the balloon has to rise too, if you want to stay afloat. As we're going up here, tell me, how do you control this thing? At different altitudes, you'll find different layers of wind. 
Sometimes we'll move off to the east, sometimes we'll move off to the south at different altitudes. It's a great experience because it, it is so slow paced. There's nothing fast about it. Uh, if you like adrenaline, ballooning is probably not for you. The warmer, less dense air in the balloon is like a bubble in the cooler, denser air surrounding it. The cooler air wants to fill in that bubble, and that's what keeps the balloon afloat. It's really then a guessing game as to where you're going to go down. Exactly. It's a, a, there, every flight is a terrific adventure, and that's another plus to flying because no two flights are alike. Every flight's an adventure. For over 10 years, ESPN has been proud to present the award-winning sports figures, and we want to thank all the athletes who have donated their time to help put your brain in the game. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial-free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or lots of other fun stuff, visit our website at sportsfigures.espn.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in the sports. Sports, sports figures, figures, put, put your, your brain, brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.